Hi guys, I'm Ella and welcome to my course. In this course, we will learn how to make uh, this cute but it's sophisticated um, polymer clay gentle mangoes on a ceramic mug. Uh, so uh, this is more of an intermediate or advanced course. I often get asked if these mugs are usable and the answer is absolutely. You can enjoy your hot or cold beverages uh, in these mugs every day. Uh, the only thing that you should keep in mind is that these mugs are not uh, microwave or dishwasher safe. Uh, so as long as you hand wash them, uh, you can use them for many years to come. So what do we need uh, to make these gentle mangoes? So for this project you need a uh, polymer clay in different colors. I used the brand named Fimo uh, and I used uh, Fimo Soft um, for the whole project. Um, you also need a pasta machine or a rolling pin. I use my pasta machine but you can also use a rolling pin for this project. Uh, we need a Clacto knife, uh, we need dotting tools in different sizes and also we need silicone tools the one with the flat end like this we also need needle tool um, or if you don't have a needle tool you can just use a needle or you can use a toothpick for that we will need uh, q-tips and uh, rubbing alcohol to um, for the cleaning purposes and also we, ne we need wet wipes we also need a piece of fabric uh, that we can use to uh, transfer the uh, like texture on the coat uh, we also need uh, dry pastels and also a brush to use them We also need a silk screen uh, with this um, plate pattern uh, that we use for uh, the vest uh, to just do the vest. We also need a transparent film and possibly a printer uh, to uh, make the newspaper, make the prints on the newspaper. If you have round cutters uh, for this project, um, your job will be much much easier. So we would need that as well. And we also need a piece of chain or one of these. Or um, I took this from my necklace. Uh, you can also use um, your accessories for this project. And also uh, we need a jump ring as you can see here. Uh, for this part of the project we also need epoxy glue that I use this brand and also super glue uh, for uh, gluing the uh, doll on the mug after baking I hope you enjoy this course in this video, uh, we will learn how to make the head and body structure of our goose. First of all, I clean my working surface, my hands and my tools uh, with a wet wipe. And I dry them uh, with a napkin before I start. This step is really important because uh, there are always some dust and tiny particles uh, that you cannot see but uh, then they stick to the clay and removing them is hard. I use a piece of toilet paper uh, under my mug so it doesn't hit the ceramic that I'm working on. I stabilize the mug with the handle on my working surface. I take a piece of polymer clay in white color and start kneading the clay. Then I make a ball in the palm of my hands and place the ball on the upper part of the mug close to the rim. I try to shape the top a bit uh, pointier, uh, kind of like a triangle and uh, then flatten the upper 
part more. So this is the shape that we are looking for. Now take another piece of clay and make a ball in the palm of your hands. Then start rolling it from the middle point. We want the piece to be narrower in the middle. Then cut the top and place it right under the head. Cut the extra clay from the bottom. Now take another piece of white clay, a bit bigger uh, than the head, and make a ball. Place the ball on the mug and start pressing it. Then try to shape it a little bit. We want to spread the clay from the sides but keep the volume in the middle. Then I put my nail right at the bottom of the mass uh, and push it a little bit so that we uh, have a pure shape. Then uh, place your finger on the lower side and spread the clay down a bit. Our goal here is uh, to define a round underbelly and also make the thighs. Then uh, grab your needle tool and blend the line between the neck and the body. We want to have a seamless transition there. After you blend everything, use your wet wipe to clean and smooth the area. Grab the uh, color you made for the legs and make a ball. I made this color by mixing yellow uh, with a little bit of magenta. Then roll the ball uh, from only one side and cut the middle part. We need a bit of thickness on one side all the way to the thinness on the other side. Now repeat the process uh, to make another one. Now attach each leg to each thigh.
I try to bring the legs closer and parallel to each other. Cut the extra legs so that you have space to make the feet. For the feet, I make two balls in the orange color and press them gently on my working surface. Try to go for similar amount of clay uh, to have identical feet. Now take each foot and try to make a triangle by pressing all the sides uh, with uh, three fingers and place it on the mark. Do the same thing for the other foot. Now take your dotting tool and start defining two lines on the foot. Repeat the process uh, for the other foot. You now can either use your X-Acto knife or round shape cutter uh, to cut the webbed feet. It is obviously easier with the round cutter. Try to clean the shapes with your dotting tool. Then blend the feet to the legs with that tool. Take one small piece of white clay and put it on the seam between the leg and the thigh, like a band-aid. Do the same for the other thigh.
Now take your needle tool and blend the clay a little bit. Now with your needle tool start scratching the clay, draw little strokes so that it looks fluffy and fur like. Continue doing that for both thighs, under the belly, head and the neck. I had a little bit of extra clay on the left thigh, so uh, I took it out and continue making the first. When you reach the part between the head and the neck, you can just blend the two with first. So I continue making the first until the bottom of the neck, but let's stop after that uh, because the clothes uh, will cover the rest of the body. Take a piece of clay in orange color and make a ball. Then start rolling it from one end and then press it gently on your working surface. Shape it a bit with your fingers. I'm trying to curve it a little bit. And then cut the extra clay.
take another piece of orange clay and make a ball. Start rolling it from only one end and flatten it on your surface. This one should be a bit narrower than the top part of the bill. Cut the extra clay and curve it a little bit with your fingers. Size it on the head and cut it if it's too long. I use my dotting tool to make the nostrils and then I clean any dust that might be there on the clay with a q-tip and rubbing alcohol. By the way, uh, you can clean your clay with wet wipes or with q-tip and rubbing alcohol. Now use your dotting tool and make two round shape dents on the head to put the eyes in. For making the eyes you need two small black balls. You can either measure them by your eyes or you can use a tiny round cutter to cut them out of the clay and make the eyes. Then place them in the dents. Then roll a fine piece of white clay and cut it in two pieces. I once again use my dotting tool to define a place for some hair. Then I use my needle tool to grab each hair and stick it on top of the head and into the dent. Now use a blush or, a, or an eyeshadow or soft pastels to blush the cheeks a little bit. I use my blush from Essence to do that. Flatten a piece of brown clay with rolling pin or pasta machine. Cut a piece of your silk screen that you need and paste it on your clay. Take the accurate color that you want, in my case it is this mustard color, and place it on your silk screen. Then use your blade and distribute the paint throughout the silk screen. By the way, before all this, make sure that your acrylic paint is suitable for your clay. Some acrylic paints don't play well uh, with polymer clay and they don't dry on the clay. Once 
wait for a few minutes and then take off the silky screen. At this point, be careful not to tear your clay. After your paint dried completely, cut the amount that you need for the waist. Cut a V shape from the rectangular. And cut the clay from the middle of the V. Also make another V shape from the bottom. and also make a crooked cut from the bottom. We are aiming for this form. Put each part on the goose and cut the extras with your exacto knife. Use your flat ended silicone tool to push the extra clay inwards. Now flatten a piece of brown clay and use a tiny round cutter to cut some round shapes. We want to use this as buttons. If you don't have these cutters, you can also just measure the amount with your eyes and make the balls.
video dotting tool with smallest ball tilt the middle of each button. Grab a piece of brown clay and roll it until it is very fine. I use my cake smoother to do so, but you can use your fingers or any other smooth uh, surface that you have to do so. Use the narrow rope that you made to cover the edges of the vest. So for the cool, flatten a piece of clay with your rolling pin or pasta machine. For the coat, I use this lighter shade of brown clay. I wrap some cornstarch on the clay and then I place a piece of fabric on top so I can transfer the fabric's texture to the clay. I pass the clay with the fabric through my pasta machine. Uh, but you can also use a rolling pin to do that. Then I remove the fabric and also dust off any extra cornstarch. I also use my dry pastels to shadow a bit of my clay. Uh, this will help the texture to stand out more. Then I cut a rectangular uh, with my blade. Then I bend my blade and cut the bottom part and also the middle part. Uh, 
And then I use this rotary data tool to make some stitches on the edges. Then place each part on the goose and turn over the color part. Then leave some extra clay on the side and make a cut. Make another cut parallel with the hem and then cut the extra clay from the sides. Repeat the process for the other side. We need these extra parts to fill the gap between the coat and the neck. Now use your silicone tool with flat end to push any extra clay around the edges inwards. Cut a narrow rectangular shape with the stitches uh, to use as the flap for the pocket. and do the same for the other side.
I use dry pastels uh, in orange color to blend the color between the feet and the legs and also contour the feet a little bit. I flatten another piece of clay and make some fabric texture on it to use for sleeves. Then grab a piece of clay and make a ball. Then roll it on your surface from one side to have a drop shape. We want to use it uh, for the left hand. I want to make the hand in a way like he put his hand behind his back. So I curve the bigger part a little bit to draw it uh, to his back. When uh, we are happy with the results, uh, we cut a piece of clay to make the sleeve. Try to cover the hand uh, with the sleeve and cut an extra clay. Then use your needle tool to make the wrinkles where the arm bends. Then I suddenly decided to change his hairstyle uh, as I felt he's too fancy for this current hairstyle. So I bent all his hair to one side. For the other hand, um, we do the same thing uh, that we did for the left hand.
For the sleeve, I roll the edge up and press it slightly with my finger. Then I roll it around the arm and cut the extras. Again, make two creases on the elbow uh, with your needle tool and place the hand on the goose. Then make a ball with a bit of white clay and flatten it a bit. With your fingers then use a scissor to cut his fingers or make some feathers Flatten a piece of red clay and cut a tiny rectangular shape. Take it with your dotting tool and place it on his neck. Make two tiny drop shapes and place them in front of each other. Use your dotting tool to make two dents in the middle parts. and then place the bow on his neck. Make a tiny ball 
with a piece of clay and place it in the middle to complete the bow. For his monotone, I sacrificed my necklace, uh, but you can use any chain that you can find and the size is right. I attached the chain uh, to an earring jump ring and uh, placed the ring on his face. Then I secured the chain under his pocket. For the newspaper, I used transparent film. I put it in my printer and print a tiny newspaper. Then I flatten a piece of white clay and transfer the print into the clay. Just use a smooth tool uh, to make sure all the details have been transferred completely to the clay. Then I remove the film and cut the clay to the size that I want. Then take the clay off and start rolling the clay. I cut half of the newspaper as the roll was just too thick uh, for my goose. Then I place the newspaper in his hand and secure it. When I'm satisfied with the sculpture, I preheat the oven to 110 degrees Celsius, uh, top and bottom heating. Then I place the mug on a piece of baking sheet and put it in the oven. I bake the clay for one hour. After one hour, I take the mug out and let it completely cool down. After that, it is time for gluing. As you can remember, we use the mug handle to stabilize the mug when we were working, so the doll is not in the center. We need to glue it in the center of the mug now. I place my thumbnail uh, below the doll in various places and it snaps off.
Please note that you cannot change your mic after you bake the dough because it already formed uh, like the original mic. For example, I cannot glue my goose uh, to this uh, green mic because it just does not rest on the mic, it just doesn't fit. So I clean my mug with a wet wipe. At this point, you should know if you are making the mug for a left or right handed person. Because if the person is left handed, you should glue the goose on the other side of the mug. I also dry the mug completely and I put two blocks of clay under the handle uh, to see the center of the mug. I use Uhu epoxy glue uh, for all my projects. It is the strongest glue I found in the market. We also need super glue. So first I mix equal parts of my epoxy glues. Then I start placing the glue on the back of the sculpture. For smaller parts, I use a toothpick uh, to be more precise. I leave some places like back of the thighs uh, without glue. I put a bit of super glue on back of his thighs later because my epoxy glue takes 90 minutes to dry and at this time the goose can slip and dislocate from the cup. So we use super glue so that it stays in place.
Now take your doll and place it carefully in the center of the mug. Wait a few seconds so that the super glue dries. Then you can use a Q-tip to clean out any extra glue that are squeezed out. Now I wait 90 minutes until all the glue dries completely. 